Hello internet friends, my name is John and in this video we will be continuing our journey on the Jamstack train. So in case you missed it, in the last video we created a base website, we used React and Next.js and we created a very simple website, we're hosting that in Netlify so anyone in the whole of the world can see our very basic website. Now in today's episode we're going to take things one step further. And in today's episode, we're going to be hooking up a headless CMS with our base project. And what's going to happen is we're going to create some pages. We're going to publish those pages within the CMS. And they're going to be generated within our static build. And anyone in the world is going to be able to see this content. Now, this is going to be super cool. The CMS that we're going to be using for this video is called Contentful. Now, I'm really liking Contentful at the moment. It's a great SaaS CMS. So what happens is you can go to Contentful, you can sign up. You don't need to worry about any sort of code whatsoever. You do all the configuration online. You get access to some APIs. So what we're doing is getting those APIs, hooking them into our Netlify build. If you haven't got the Netlify build, obviously the code is below. Just thought I'd mention that. So you can download that below from my GitHub. Now, if you haven't come across my videos before, you must be a massive Wally. My name is John and I do weekly YouTube videos on web development. If you haven't subscribed already, then what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button now because this is YouTube. It's very easy to lose content and I'd very much appreciate it. So assuming you've done that, let's crack on and hook up this headless CMS. In the first part of this video, we're going to set up our headless CMS content form. Now, as I said, this is a SaaS CMS. So this means we don't have to install anything, download anything. All we need to do is open up a web browser and go over to contentful.com, as you can see here. Now, what I'm going to do in this section is show you everything you need to set it up, create some pages, do the content modeling, and get the API keys. So the first thing we're going to do is log into the CMS. Now, I've already got an account. However, I recommend that you use your GitHub account. So just go to login and then go to the GitHub. So clicking on this will load Contentful. Now the first time Contentful loads, you're gonna to have to create a space. And this is where all your content is gonna go. It's gonna be the content bucket. So clicking on our add space, we're gonna have a few options. As you can see, we've got a community space, so it's absolutely free. Now, as long as you're creating small brochureware websites and it's not being used by millions of people, you're gonna be able to use free and you'll probably get away with using free forever. As you can see, it says free forever. You get two locales, you get an admin and an editor, you can use 25,000 assets, you get a master and a staging environment, and you get 48 different content types. So the jump from free is quite big. It's $500 a month. However, as I was saying, if you're just creating small websites, it's free and it's great. And because you're not having to do any of that setup code, it's super simple. Now we're gonna go for this web app only. And as you can see, our monthly total is zero. I'm gonna click continue. So I'm just gonna call this space John D. Jones sample site. Create it as an empty space and click create. Now there we go. That's all it took for us to get everything going. We now have a space, so as you can see at the top here, we've got this sample site. Now the first thing we're going to do is create some pages. So if we go to the content model, click on here, I'm going to add a content type. Now this is just going to be our page. We're going to keep this very simple, so main page template. And we're going to go create. As you can see, we can now add some fields. So clicking on this add field button on the side right here, I'm gonna click on that and let's just create the classic rich text. And we're just gonna call something like title. Very creative, I know. Let's create something slightly different. Um, as you can see, we've got stuff like a media picker, a Boolean, location. You can actually extend into Contentful quite a lot. I'll show that in later videos. However, let's just do a true false property as well. Click create. Now, this is all we've done. This is my content modeling. So if I click save, this should then create it. Perfect. Now, as you can see, the next tab along has got content, and this is how we create our pages. So we're just going to go to content and then click on this big add page button right at the bottom. We're going to add our page. And then from here, you can see that we can add in our title that I've created. So I'm going to call this, here is my content very nice and let's make that true 
Now, just like any CMS, you can configure Contentful in loads of different ways. We're just gonna keep things super simple at the moment. So as you can see, we've done our content modeling. We've got some basic content. Now, the next thing we want to do is go over to this settings tab up here. So clicking on this settings tab, as you can see, we have a number of options. And the thing that we care about is called API keys. So if we go over to our API keys, you can see that we've got no API keys set up. So clicking right at the top in this add API key, we are going to click on our add API key and we're going to call this my prod API key. Now this can be whatever you want to call it. It does not make a difference. API key. And basically when we go back to our Next.js application, we're going to get this space ID right here. We're going to get this access token, which I won't show you, and this preview token. And we're going to hook this up with an application. And this is how the Next.js application is going to talk back to Contentful. And then we should be able to query our different page types and get our content within our application. Amazing. So if we click save, that's all we need to do. And this is everything you need to do for this video to set up Contentful so we can start accessing that content within our application. I have opened up our Next.js base application in Visual Studio Code. Remember, you can download this from my GitHub link below. Now, the first step, we're going to create some environment variables. So we're going to create a .m file. And the properties that we need to create are contentful underscore space underscore ID, contentful underscore access underscore token, and contentful underscore preview access token. So as I was saying, we're going to go back to our contentful, copy the space ID, paste it in, copy our delivery token, paste it in, and then copy our preview token, paste it in. Nice. So the next part is we're going to install the Contentful npm package. Simply open up a terminal and we're going to type the very complex command, which is npm install the content for. And all the packages will automatically be installed for us. In our next step, we now need to get Contentful to talk to our application. So let's get on and write this code. So create a new folder. In here, I'm going to call it utils. Amazing. Now, in utils, I'm going to create another file and it's going to be called content full post. Page, actually. Page is probably going to be a little bit nicer. Okay, so in here, what we're going to do is a const. Then we're going to do a space. So we're going to get our space ID, which should be process.env.content full space underscore id beautiful now we're going to do const access token then we're going to do our process dot env dot content full underscore access underscore token beautiful now the next thing we're going to do with our keys is called contentful so we're going to do const clients and then we're going to do require and then we're going to do content full then we're going to do create and it's going to be a create clients and then we're going to put an object in there and we're going to have space and space i could probably shortcut this but hey ho token access token and then let's create a new function so this is going to be an async so we're going to do export async then we're going to do a function and we're going to do fetch entries then we're going to do a const hopefully we're going to do a const then we're going to do a response equals await and then we're going to do client dot get content types just like that beautiful and then the next thing we're going to do is get some entities or entries so const entries equals await clients dot 
get any trees. And then what we're going to do is console log these out quickly just so we can see what's going on. Console log entries. And then what we're going to do is if entries dot items and then we're going to turn our entries dot items and then finally I don't want to forget this we're going to export default and then fetch entries which is the name of our function so let's just check get entries get entries we're reading in our space and access token that we generated from contentful we're using the contentful package to use the get content type and get entries and then based on here we're going to be able to query our content and then we're going to be able to use this api within our page to be able to call data from the cms in the next step what we're going to do is now use this utility within our page so what happens is that when the page gets rendered we're going to display some information from contentful beautiful so if you remember from the last video, we created that amazingly beautiful page with a picture of Borat on it within our pages index.js. The first thing that we are going to do is import fetch entries. And then that's going to be from dot dot slash utils and then contentful page. Now, when we're working with the Next.js, there's different ways of pulling in data. Because we are creating a Jamstack based website, we want to create static HTML for our pages. Now, this is a bit of a difference from how we'd normally use a CMS. Normally, when you use a CMS, you'd make a page request, the CMS would then go off and get that data, and then it'll be displayed on the page. This is really slow, and this is the reason why we want to use Jamstack. In this architecture, what we want to do is that when the CMS, is, uh, well, sorry, when Next.js is compiling our static HTML, it's at that stage that we want to call the CMS, and then we want to hard code all of the content from the CMS into our static pages. So in Next.js, the way to do this is using something called get static props. So we do export, we do async, we do function, and then we do get static props. Now this is a special Next.js thing. This isn't something I made up, so the naming convention of this is really important. So now if we do a const, and then we do an entries, entries, and then we do our await, and then we want fetch entries. Beautiful. Now let's console log that out, because I'm sure there might be a few snags along the way, who knows? Live coding's are always fun. So let's just put our console log entries in there. Now what's gonna happen is when we get our entries, so let's just go let's data. We're then gonna do our entries and we're gonna filter our data because this is gonna be an array. And then what we're gonna do in our filter is we're going to return an item dot sys dot content type and then the id dot sys again then dot id i can never remember this one is it going to equal to page so this is the page id we had let's have a look what i've done wrong here that function let's do that and there we go so this is then going to get us our data let's console log out our data as well And then finally, we're going to map our fields to a object. So what we can do now is just do um, const fields. And then we're just going to do a data. We're going to do a map. We're then going to do a get each item within our map. And then we're just going to do a return. And then m.fields. Gonna be an item, isn't it? Oh. So let's data dot map. What have I done wrong here? Mr. Equals. Silly me. And then let's quickly do our console.log again. And then fields. 
Now, the thing with get static props is it's expecting a object to be returned. So if we do not do that, we'll get an issue. So let's just return some props. And then from our props, what we're going to do is just let's return fields. So we're going to pass that. And then just for fun, we probably don't need to do this. Let's just return our data. Now, let's see what happens if we try and compile our website. This should be fun. So if we do an npm run dev, what do you think is going to happen? Now, as you can see, we're running on a local host right here, which is very nice. And we've got this error, uh, error not found. I think I know what that one's going to be down to. So let's go back to our contentful page. Now from here, you can see that I've got a get content type. We're not actually using this response. We're going to use it in a future video. However, I forgot to pass in this ID here. Now if I save this, let's just close it just to make sure that the nothing goes amiss. As you can see, we've got our local host. We're compiling things. Now we've got another error. Additional keys return from get set of prop. Properties intended for your component must be nested under the props key. That is what I was trying to do. What's happening? Uh, there we go. Missed an S out. And then let's try it again. Now this is very common when you're trying to set this up. If you have a few snags along the way, do not get a bit despondent because sometimes it's a bit of a pain. Now, as you can see from all the renderings on my page in the terminal right here, you can see that I'm getting the data page right here. We've got our main page template. We've got our field, which has got the title and the rich text. This is all looking good. This looks like we're actually pulling data back from the CMS. As you can see here, we've got the array, we've got some items, we've got the information, the true or false fields. And at the moment, everything is looking very nice. Now, as you can see, we've got our title and our true false property. So going through the steps, this is everything. So we've managed to do, it's quite impressive for quite such a, a short amount of time, is we've installed this content for package from NPM. We've created this content for utility here. Now there's different ways, as you can see, we can get get entries. We've also got this get content type that we're not actually using. However, this would be a different way of querying the CMS. So the point is there's not just one single way of querying content full, depending on your needs. So say if you're creating a blog listing page, you might want to get all your pages. If you're creating an individual blog page, you might just want to get a one specific item. Now back to our page, what we can see is that when we were doing this, we just simply imported our API. And then in our get static props, this is the really important thing, is that we called the CMS. Now we did a bunch of fun uh, fancy filtering and mapping. Now, depending on how you want to do it, you might want to do this differently when you're structuring your page. However, the important thing to note is sometimes you're going to have data which is not nested very nice. So say in here, we've got an item, a sys, a content type, a sys, ID. Now this way is, um, takes a little bit of practice if I'm honest when you're working with content full you're going to have data structures and formats in different ways once you get used to CMS you can start banging this stuff out without thinking about it too much however it can look a little bit intimidating the first time you go around it now as you can see we've got our data we've got our fields and we're returning it the next thing we're going to do is just render out some information on our page so let's do that now quickly before we wrap up this video Okay, so as you can see, we have our web page up and running, beautiful. Now, going back to our component, we need to pass in our props. So let's just pass in our props right there. Now, within our method, we need to do a bit of a destructuring. So we're going to do fields. Remember, we passed that in. And we're just going to do props. Now, within our component, we're just going to do a little bit of code. So we're going to do a fields. And then we're going to do a map. So this is going to iterate through all of our properties. And we're just going to do this as a uh, item. It doesn't make a difference what we call it. And then what we're going to do in here is we're just going to have a, a React fragment. We're going to close our fragment. So we just got something to contain it in. Now we're just going to do a simple um, item. And then we're just going to do a true and a false and then a two, and then a string. Just convert that Boolean into something we can see. Now, if we go back to the page, do a refresh, hopefully that should display. 
and let's just get rid of the image just to make sure nothing's going amiss and if we do a refresh just my id is playing up a little bit normally the hot reloading in next.js is really good however mine seems to be playing up today let's go back to the page and hopefully we should be able to see our true false item we're not getting any errors which is always very handy so we've got props we're passing in our fields we're doing a field map item and you know what we're not doing are we some idiot has forgot to do a return so let's just return this that will probably be a very handy and then is it that recompile we, there we go beautiful so we've got true now let's just quickly get our image back see what happens now as you see my id is taking ages now as you can see we've got this true false property which we set within contentful now if i did a console dot log then item and then title because remember we also created that rich text something interesting is going to happen so let's just try and render it out go back to our page there we go now as you can see here we've got a can you see there we go let's make it a bit larger so everyone can see so when it comes to rendering out rich text things aren't as easy as they are with other properties and because rich text has this data content no type structure it actually returns an array and based on the way there's loads of different complicated things that can happen so imagine you add a bold or an italic or something like that all this data gets returned in the api now trying to manually do all of this yourself is very silly and really complicated luckily contentful has hooked us up so if we go back to our web browser as you can see here we have the contentful rich react renderer now if we install this bad boy it's going to do everything for us so what we're going to do is copy this npm install contentful rich text react render now go back to our terminal so paste that in now as that's installing let's go back to our page so what we're going to do is copy in the import which is at the top here so documents to a react components is the thing that we care about and if we just paste that back in here now while we are within our collection what we can do is a document to a react components now we can pass in our item dot title and then if we click save now we do an npm run dev this should bang up our site again we should see our beautiful picture of borat loading now if we have a look at this hopefully when it loads you can see that the image is cropping it off can't be bothered to fix that there however now you can see that the image has gone and we've got our content displaying from contentful so as you can see in this video we've done quite a lot we've completely set up a cms we've added a new content type so we've done some content modeling we've created some pages we've hooked up contentful within our app and now we're rendering on a page now this video is probably a bit longer than the ones that i normally like to do it's about 20 minutes long however installing a cms which is scalable so loads of people can see it within under 20 minutes is pretty impressive if you ask me now obviously there's different ways of using contentful and the point of this video isn't about best practices it's just to show you how you can hook everything up so you can start playing things with yourself now there are more optimal ways of using contentful which we'll cover in the latter part of the series however for now you have everything set up to create yourself a very cool amazing jamstack website using netlify the next js and the contentful headless cms welcome to the outro this signals the end of this video you're probably uh, quite thankful because in general i like to keep my videos 10 minutes or less i think tech videos over 10 minutes tend to bore the pants off of me so i try and respect people's time however i'm hoping you can agree that in this video we have done an impressive amount of stuff setting up cms's integrating stuff rendering data onto pages we've done an absolute ton in a space of one video 
So I hope you have a load of value from this video. I think what we're doing is really cool and I'm really impressed with this series. There is still loads of really cool stuff to come up. Obviously now we've just created our boilerplate and our skeleton, so we didn't have to do any of the setup stuff anymore. Moving forward, we can start looking at how to do some like cool features. Anyway, if you haven't already, and I have reminded you once, so you should have, naughty people, hit that subscribe button right now because it's the easiest way that someone in this universe will think of you as an absolute legend. So please do that. I would very much appreciate it. If you want to help me into tricking YouTube and sharing my video to more people, hit that like button because it generally does help me. Otherwise, I hope you have found some amazing value and you've learned something from this video. Hope you have an amazing day and happy coding.